personal goal as a performer is to try to be really real and really true to the rhythm, to make sure I'm really connecting and feeling and hearing and trying to play it as accurately as I can. And what happens by doing that is that something different will happen each time. But ultimately it's, it's interesting because the, the meat of the story is the rhythm. And so I'm always coming back to what the rhythm says. Last call to the diner. What's the matter over there, Charlie? I don't know, Fred. It looks like she's stuck. I didn't pull a leg. There we go. What's it doing there, Charlie? I'm trying to do the best. dead and 14 injured. There's a timelessness, I think, in jump rhythm choreography because it is not, the dance is not about the war in Iraq. That is a cultural context that this piece about conflict and struggle and human, you know, condition. human condition reacting to things around them um, are going <laughs> through. And I don't remember at one point of Billy ever saying, let's do a piece about mm -hmm. <laughs> the war in Iraq. Having a round table about it. <laughs> the idea, the person, the character, what, how they're experiencing where they are in life right now is not confusing. I feel pretty yeah. clear Here, here's about the that. Other deal. You, I think I said this at the very beginning. You guys are playing a chorus against this figure. And while in contemporary naturalistic theater there's no such thing as a chorus where you don't have an individual life behind you, I, I agree about that. But what we're trying to do is create a sort of impersonal body of people whose impact is meant to be more of a ground, a, a ground against which
I don't ever think that the artistic um, point of view is like a direct commentary. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that people see this and they're like, you know, now I can relate to this conflict that is happening in our world. But I mean, like, Seven and ha 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 ha
we talk about dancing emotion, and I know as a modern dancer I experienced um, acting as if or trying to dance, hap trying to do a happy dance or trying to, and this is different, we are happy. We have joy, we have anger. Mm -hmm. And the heart isn't capable, I mean it sounds cliche, but the heart isn't capable of having joy without sorrow, confidence without insecurity. And so there's a piece of this process that the energy won't come out, it won't be a conviction of movement and being and past and future and doing all that in the present unless you've somehow wrestled with all these things having to coexist inside of you so that you keep expanding. And that expansion, you can't quantify and saying, well, this helps this technical thing happen, but it does. Somehow it does. The joints release when you mm -hmm. sob in a way that they won't release if you tell yourself over and over again, oh, mm -hmm. that elbow Dance joint sad. will Be relax. Sad. So <laughs> it's, um, that's sort of the mystery, and which is hard because we'd all rather just figure it out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes someone rubbing against you. Sometimes it takes someone looking in the, you in the eye and not looking away until you finally realize that you want them so badly to look away. And at the moment when you burst through that moment and look and keep looking until you shiver, you've had a breakout moment. That's a breakout moment. And suddenly you're more human and community is actually happening and it's not a concept. So in the case of getting there, for instance, um, the dance is, simplistically, it's about, the, it's, it's about going from isolation to community. And where we had to start with very strongly for the dancers was what does it mean to be isolated? The premise of the first section is that prior circumstances are you've been quite happy and fine and delighted that you've been living an isolated existence and you don't let anybody touch you and you don't touch them. And then what happens is you get into this situation where all of a sudden something starts coming at you and what comes at you is that. It's people going like this. And you have been training yourself not to let anything in but the violence of that kind of starts going, what's going on? So even though you disapprove of it, hell are you doing that for? There's a part of you that kind of let it in. Somewhere in the dim consciousness of your mind, you said to yourself by the end of the first section, gee, there's other people in the world feeling this way too. That's, that's the premise. So what happened was human compassion started bubbling up in you. I mean, I'm not trying to make this complex because this is a very simple, normal scenario. We've all been through this scenario. But you are developing the beginning of bravery to speak emotionally. That's what's happening, to let your words out. Does this sound familiar? Right. It's the story of Jump Rhythm Jazz Project. That was the first dance that I ever learned with this company. So for me, that, that piece means a lot. And within the piece, you know, that the very last part is really when all of us are doing the same thing. Like it's the first moment of unison is the very end of the dance. And in the meantime, you've had all this sort of individual Mm -hmm. Things happening in really individual voices, and then we slowly. Yeah. It does. I mean, it's, it's a great <laughs> getting example. there. So I, I love that this is like you know was the the first piece, and it's sort of like welcome to the company. Here's getting there. <laughs> so when this section happens, you're beginning to do this verb that I've used. I've heard blurt. Now you're blurting articulately because we have choreographed it rhythmically so that it's articulate rhythmically, but. We don't know that it's articulate, it should look like blurting. Because if I just go blah, 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 that's actually not going to read as blurting. Because that's not what the theater is about. Theater is heightened reality, it's not reality. It's not just screaming, it's Tika Poo see Ba is the bad guy. That's what it's about. It is definitely a great example of the process that we do, but you know, we each have our the individual Burst. voices going on and our first our bursts of you know, our blurts, our, blurts, <laughs> our sentences, <laughs> each thing that we have to say, and then slowly we come together, three of us at a time, and two of us at a time, and then there's four of us, but that last moment when we all decide to come together. 